What are three things you need to know before you get a Mac Monster? Also known as a macaw parrot. Hi, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parapolis Bond, having some fun this afternoon while my husband's with the Mac Monsters. Um, ever so quickly, of course, please be sure to get your copy of The Parapolis Bond on Amazon.com so you have your handbook and you know how to take care of your parrot. Now, welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, I have 18 species of parrots. I love parrots. I love talking about parrots. I love hearing how you're doing with your parrot, what kind of species you have, or you're getting all sorts of things like that. Now, if you're looking at getting a Mac monster, there are three things that you really need to know. And before I tell you, I bet you might want to know that one there is Kailani on the left. She is a Catalina macaw. And that one there is Cami. She's trying to see if she can find a button to break and eat. And she is a Harlequin macaw. These girls are both hybrids, which means that their parents are both natural macaws kind of thing. Like Kailani on the left, left is a cross between a scarlet and a blue and gold macaw. So three things you need to know. Number one, do you see their sheer size? I mean, when it comes to this parrot's body, just their physical requirements, there are some things you really need to take into account before you get one. Uh, they're big. And so for that reason, they really are loud. When we're walking and we're beyond those houses on the other side of the street, on the other side of the lake, we can hear them. Uh, so they're really loud and you have to make sure that A, you don't fall in the pool like I just almost did. And B, you know, if they're screaming, you're okay with that. Like, for us, thank goodness, so far out here, they aren't screaming and squawking all day long, and so it's been fine. But um, let's see if we can get one to fly for you. Come here. Step up. Step up. Good girl. You ready? Will you fly for me? Fly! That's not a whole lot of flying, but you can see that they have huge wingspans. Let's see if they'll come back. Get come on. Again. And you can see that they really need the exercise. It's just plain old good for them. Oh, <laughs> hi, sweetie. Good girl. You're such a good girl. So you really want to make sure you have the room for them. You need one of those really big cages, like the kind I can stand in, uh, in order to house them. And that's not big enough for them to live in. Like we, for us, that's their bed. Uh, but during the day they're out here because they really need the space. You want to fly again? <laughs> so, number two, the second thing you need to know. Okay, that wasn't much of a flight. Earlier this morning, they were like flying back and forth. Second thing you need to know. These mech monsters, um, sometimes I watch Dr. K's ER. She's an exotic vet and she has a TV show. And um, one thing she says about these birds, macaws, is that they're intimidating. They know, look at that. Awesome, now that's some flying. Good job, you wanna fly back? <gasps> Go! Look at that, see, that's what I mean. Like just for them to, it's kind of like you and I walking. So she says they're intimidating, they are. Look at that big monster beak. That is a big monster beak. That big monster beak can crake, crake, crack walnuts open. Go! Go! Fly back! Uh, she didn't fly back. Um. We give them coconuts, they break the coconuts open. They know that they're monstrous. They know that you don't want to be bitten kind of thing. They can be intimidating. So I would easily say this is not a beginning bird. This is a bird that you have to know how to handle the beak, how to train a bird like this, how to make sure that you're going to have a good experience because they don't just um, hatch flying to you and being nice and not biting you. Actually, do you see the scars on my arm? That's from just these strong, powerful, I call them talons, and then my vet and my mentor are like, they're nails, they're nails. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but <laughs> nails, nails don't feel like that. Look at the hole, let's see, can you see the holes? They're not doing anything negative to me. They're, all they're doing is perching, that's all. So it's like, you have to be physically, um, I think physically equipped in the sense that you have to have a big house, you have to have the space, and you have to have tough skin because, <laughs> you know, man, it's painful. Um, good girl. What a good flyer. And here comes the second one. Oh, look at that. Good girl. Of course, 
I'll tell you that you have to have two because these two keep each other company. They um, promote each other's well-being. They have fun together. It's like one alone. They're social uh, animals, and one alone is some sort of, uh, I think, torture. I mean, they're just, they're not meant to be alone. And look at her. Oh, she's getting tired. Okay, number three, the third thing you need to know about macaw parrots before you get one is um, when we had a big dog, getting a big bag of dog food was like 30 bucks and that bag lasted, I don't know, four to six weeks, something like that. With these McMonsters, we get a bag of macaw food uh, about once a month and the bag is like $70, $80. The bag has nuts and seeds mixed in it. I don't really prefer the seeds for them. It's the wrong kind of fat. I've just been photobombed. Here you go. <laughs> or video bombed. Ah, step up. Um, and so, you know, you have to like count on buying them nuts. So their maintenance is not inexpensive and they're really messy. So you really got to clean up after them. Nope, not on my shoulder, please. Step up. Good girl. So, um, you know, I don't know. I spend a hundred bucks easily a month on nuts, although they're not our only nut eaters. My point is these girls, these McMonsters are nut eaters and um, you, you have to buy the nuts or like coconut oil and put it on their food in addition to their fresh vegetables. So research their diet because they're going to make a mess. It's going to be a big poopy mess. Plus when they eat their food scatters everywhere, like, you know, the seeds or pellets or whatever it is. Um, and then you have to have the nuts. You have to give them fresh vegetables. It's a lot. And because these McMonsters are monsters, which I say with love because, you know, of that. <laughs> you know, I think you just have to really know that you are tough and you really have the space for them and you're okay with their calling being really loud and you're okay with them. I mean, look at that. Did you see that? She's playing. She's kind of feeling things out. She doesn't have hands. She has a beak. And See, she adores my husband. She's playing with him. But you saw her put her beak around his finger, and he lifted his finger saying, nope, I'm in charge. And he just did it again for you. So they're not like all of my other birds. I mean, all of my other birds, it's not like I mean, they're similar, but these are the Mac queens as far as you really have to have sort of like a discipline plan or training or, you know, you really have to have these things in place in order to deal with their physical abilities, in order to deal with their uh, intimidating attitude, and in order to pay for their monthly bill, taking them to the vet, you know, getting them a cage and their food. I hope you have learned some about these Mac monsters. They are incredible. Um, she, this one, uh, Cammie loves to be pet by my husband. And you'll see he mostly just pets her head. He'll touch her body, but he mostly just pets her head. And she just loves it. She's a hedonist. And um, she's actually extremely affectionate. Are they loving? Yes. Is there a beak at the beginning and end of that love? Oftentimes. <laughs> and that's just what a Mac monster is. Thank you for joining me in this blissful video. If you have any questions about parrots, please be sure to comment below. If you want to connect, please make sure that you join my group on Facebook, Parrot Bliss Flock. And you can do hashtag Parrot Bliss Flock. Um, if your parrot is stressed out at all, you must have, Tinks must have Parrot Relief, which is CBD and help in hemp, and it will help bring your parrot back to some balance. Thanks for joining me. Oh, and you can find that on ParrotBliss.com. See you next time.